Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. We're back with another NPB team preview for the 2023 season. The last two teams we've covered have been in the Central League. So let's go back to the Pacific League and talk about the Saitama Seibu Lions. A team that surprised a lot of people, including myself last year, by sneaking into the playoffs with a record of 72-68-3. Their offense wasn't good, ranking 5th with a 93 WRC+, but their pitching was, was very, very good, ranking 2nd with a 99 FIP-. So it was important for the Lions to have a year like that because they finished dead last in 2021 for the first time in like three decades. This storied franchise well and truly hit rock bottom, and they needed that rebound campaign to tell fans that there's reason to stay optimistic. Uh, the problem is, I think their relative success last year was, was more of a fluke than an indicator of long-term success to come, because this team just keeps getting their best players uh, plucked away year after year. Seibu used to always hold on to their stars for pretty much their entire careers, but things have really changed in recent years. I mean, it's kind of ironic that their new manager, Kazmatsui, also spent most of his latter years outside of Saitama because he went to MLB, then came back and signed with the Eagles, um, though he did retire as a Lion, of course. But it's sort of symbolic of, of the bit of the bigger picture for the Lions here because they lost Yusei Kikuchi and Hideto Asamura in 2018. They lost Shogo Akiyama in 2019. They lost Tomoya Mori this past offseason. Uh, and they might end up losing Hotaka Yamakawa after this year. So this might very well be Yamakawa's last dance with the Lions, which, which would be devastating, really. Um, as I just said, they lost Tomoya Mori this offseason via free agency a former MVP winner, and still the best catcher in all of Japan. So that's an enormous loss. Uh, and they also decided not to bring back Birch Smith or Brian O'Grady, which I think is a mistake, but I understand it. But to make up for these sub subtractions, they've added some new foreigners in pitcher Jesus Tenoco, infielder David McKinnon, and outfielder Mark Payton. Plus they picked up pitcher Yaku Cho from Oryx as their compensation for losing Mori. I think these are all solid pickups, but they aren't replacing Mori's value in, in any shape or form. I really think they needed to sign Kensuke Kondo. Uh, th there was a report from a semi-reputable source early in the offseason that the Lions were in on him until the very end, but of course they got outbid by SoftBank. So, a pretty rough offseason for sure, but they still have some solid pieces on the roster, so let's start with the rotation as always. Kona Takahashi has recently expressed MLB aspirations, and I like the fact that he's preparing for that by going to driveline over the offseason. However, I don't really think Kona is a true ace like some people make him out to be. I think he's good, don't get me wrong, but um, I think he's just kind of a top of the rotation guy. I don't think he's necessarily in that elite category yet. Did have an excellent 2022 with a 2.20 ERA, but every other year before that was an ERA in the high threes or even the fours, so I need to see a lot more to buy in. I'm actually a bit higher on, on Wataru Matsumoto and Tatsuya Imai. I think both of them have better raw stuff than Takahashi. Granted, they've both got some command issues, but Imai especially. I mean, small sample size because he was injured, but 9 starts, 2.41 ERA, uh, and more than a strikeout per inning. So I really think Imai, at just 24 years old, has the potential to become one of the better arms in, in all of Japan, or the Pacific League at the very least. Uh, Dietrich Enns and Kaito Yoza are, are solid as well. I was impressed with year one of Enns, managed a sub-3 ERA, though the peripheral numbers weren't, weren't necessarily great. Uh, and Yoza is a submariner, so, so not a guy that misses bats, but controls the strike zone and keeps the ball in the park. I doubt that he can replicate his 2022 success, but I guess we'll see. And then let's not forget about Kaima Tyra, one of the best relievers in MPB since breaking into the league in 2019. Just absolutely elite stuff. 1.66 career ERA with almost 11 Ks per nine. And he was able to finally convince the Lions uh, front office to let him test his luck in the starting rotation starting this year. So definitely some risk involved when you move a guy from the late innings where he was able to just unleash 110% each time out. Uh, in little one-inning bursts to, to now he needs to get fully stretched out, pace himself, 
learn the rhythm of a game. Um, he's, he's built more like a reliever, both in his kind of short build and his really violent mechanics. However, I, I believe he can make the adjustment. You know, it cost 17 scoreless innings in the preseason. Who knows how many innings he can throw in a full season, but he might instantly be one of the best starters in the league if everything clicks. Tyra's departure, though, um, from the bullpen means that their other relievers need to really step it up and, and do even more to hold down the fort in the late innings. Um, and, and Cebu's pen last year was phenomenal, so I think they can do it. Uh, part of that is their defense, because the, the advanced stats for the pitching doesn't really look all that insane. But hey, if you're keeping runs off the board, you're doing your job. The veteran, uh, Tatsushi Matsuda, still the ninth inning guy, but should he falter like he did a couple of years ago, the Lions have, have a stable of guys that are next in line, whether that be Yoshinobu Mizukami, who won the PL Rookie of the Year last year, Roski Moriwaki, or, or, or Keisuke Honda. Um, I, I should also mention that their top two draft picks from 2021, Chihiro Sumida and uh, Shunsuke Sato, should both contest four spots in the rotation. Uh, a couple of young arms that had underwhelming rookie years, but definitely have, have a lot of potential. Um, and so overall, I like the pitching, which at this time last year was not something I would have said. They did really well last season to, to right the ship because they had one of the worst pitching staffs in the league even when they were a great team contending with the Hawks uh, for all those pennants in the late 2010s. So they've really come a long ways to develop that, that pitching. Uh, the hitting, though, really sets this team back. When Tomoyo Mori was hurt early last season, the Lions got zero production from the catching position, so Senatsuge or uh, Yuto Koga both have some huge uh, shoes to fill, and I just don't think either of them are capable of doing that. There's a lot of pressure on Hotaka Yamakawa, at first base on a walk year to carry this offense like he did in 2022. And yes, he absolutely can mash, but he has to essentially replicate his season, uh, the, the, the season that he had last year, or be even better. So, you know, 40 plus bombs with a WRC plus over 150. Otherwise, I don't think they're going to score enough runs. And Yamakawa just has no protection in this lineup, so that's asking an awful lot from him. Uh, Sosuke Genda and Shuta Tonisaki up the middle are just superb defenders, two of the best in the business. They accumulate high war totals simply because of their incredible field work and because they offer at least better than nothing at the plate. Um, Genda was certainly instrumental for Samurai Japan at the WBC, but you can't project much from either of them in terms of hitting. And that means that their new imports, David McKinnon and, and Mark Payton, need to produce. Um, and I wish them all the luck, but I just don't see it. I think McKinnon is a solid player, but I can't see him hitting much better than league average. And I think Peyton is is a downgrade, honestly, from O'Grady and Spangenberg from previous years. So I, I'd love to be proven wrong here, but I don't expect much. Uh, of course, they also have utility man Nantang Wu for another foreign bat, but um, he has a pretty low offensive ceiling. Now, rookie Takia Hiruma um, out of college, certainly a, a rookie of the year candidate, big question mark, but he can slide right into the outfield and hopefully put his bat batting talents on display. Um, but it's not going to be easy when this lineup is so shallow and he's not going to have any protection. And then, you know, you go down the list and you got guys like Aito, Suzuki, Kaneko, and Kawagoe in the outfield. You know, these are more defense first guys, I think. Um, and that leaves you with 39-year-old Takia Nakamura. Active MPB leader in home runs with over 450, but what does he have left in the tank? Can he reach 500? Is is this an Albert Pujols type situation where you think he's totally done, but he, you know, gives it everything he's got for one final push and shocks everyone? Uh, we shall see. I've always loved seeing Yamakawa and Nakamura, two absolute units mashing together, but it's tough to expect much from a 40-year-old that hit below 200 in 2022. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the Lions preview. This team is definitely built on pitching and, and mostly defense. Uh, they've, they've got plenty of that. Though, like I said, the pitching numbers are probably a bit inflated by the defense, and they don't necessarily have anything in the way of hitting. Uh, in fact, I think this might be the weakest offense in all of MPB. It's literally Yamakawa and a bunch of guys that you already know can't hit or are total unknowns that have, you know, maybe like a 20% chance of actually being good. Um, but that's just what I think. I know a lot of other people are 
kind of high on the Lions. They think they'll be okay this year, at least contend for a playoff spot. So let me know what you think, and thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.